Hi, my name is Evelyn Johnston. I'm a member of the faculty at the Universidad Diego Portales here in Chile. And I'd like to tell you about a project I've been working on during the lockdown called Body Manga. So this is a statistical spectroscopic survey of galaxy bulges and disks. So as we're aware, galaxies evolve during their lifetimes and their morphology also transforms at different times. We have here the magnitude size relation for galaxies in the Fornax cluster. On the left hand side, you can see in red are the dwarf galaxies. Now these can have either very simple morphologies such as uh, dwarf spheroidals or dwarf ellipticals. Uh, they can also be disky or they can be completely irregular. Now, as dwarf galaxies uh, evolve, they accrete mass through accretion of uh, lower mass galaxies and through mergers. And they've, they move up this sequence where they, get, they grow in mass and magnitude and size until they reach about 10 to the nine, 10 to the 10 solar masses. At this point, they start to transition onto the second sequence, which is the massive galaxy sequence. So this is where you would find the typical Hubble sequence galaxies, the elliptical spirals and s zeros. And so at some point in this transition region, uh, the dwarf galaxy complex, uh, morphology starts to become much more complex. They start to develop structures such as bulges, disks, spiral arms, and bars. But once they move onto this massive galaxy sequence, that's not the end of the story. Uh, they obviously continue to grow in mass uh, through star formation and through accretion of other lower mass galaxies. Um, but they can also evolve based on quenching of star formation. So spiral galaxies, if the star formation is quenched and they maintain their disk structure, the spiral galaxies will evolve into S zeros, or if they become completely disrupted, they will evolve into the elliptical galaxies. Now, all of these different processes will have will leave different signatures on the bulges and disks. Um, and so by understanding the star formation histories and the stellar populations of the different components within these galaxies, we can better understand the processes that, uh, that triggered the transformation and also the processes that, that occurred during the transformation. Now, one very successful way to look at the stellar populations of bulges and disks is through bulge disk decomposition, which is usually done with photometric data. You take an image of your galaxy and you model the surface brightness profile of the bulge and the disk, creating two dimensional models of each component. And from these, you can then pull out uh, the structural information, such as the sizes, the magnitudes. And if you have multi-waveband imaging, you can also uh, determine the photometric stellar populations. And while this information is very useful, we have issues with photometric stellar populations being degenerate, especially, um, especially between age and metallicity. And so one way of breaking this degeneracy is to try and use spectra. And ideally, we want to try and cleanly extract the spectra of the bulges and the disks so we can understand their stellar populations in more detail. So I've been working on various different techniques for bulge disk decomposition of spectroscopic data. And one of my techniques is BODY, bulge disk decomposition of IFU data. So BODY is a wrapper for Galfit M which in turn uh, is a modified form of GALFET that can model multi-waveband images simultaneously. So BODY uses galfit m to create a wavelength dependent model of every component uh, within the galaxy by modeling the image of the galaxy in every single image slice in an IFU data cube simultaneously. Um, this is the benefit that it uses information from the entire data cube to boost the signal to noise over that of any particular image slice which means you can still obtain um, reliable estimates of the structural parameters, even in image slices with particularly low signal to noise or where you've got some contamination from uh, remnants of skylines, for example. Uh, and at the end of the process, Buddy is able to give you uh, spectra representing purely the bulge and purely the disk. Now, I want to really emphasize these are the clean bulge and disk spectra. There is minimal contamination from the superposition of the light of one of another component and also from the light of foreground or background objects. So I've used Buddy for quite a few studies over the years, um, extending from extended stellar halos right down to uh, nuclear star clusters. But I've always worked with very small samples. And I've, for years, I've wanted to try and use Buddy on a statistical sample to really understand what's happening within bulges and disks. And this is where Buddy Manga comes in. Uh, I have been working to automate Buddy to apply it to around 1,700 suitable galaxies from the latest data, re data release of the Manga survey. Um, these are galaxies observed with 91 and 127 fibre IFUs, uh, which have successful fits 
uh, from the MPP value added catalog. So we use the fit parameters from this catalog as the initial parameters for the body fits. And we can see below here, we have on the left an image uh, of one of the manga galaxies with the, um, with the manga field of view uh, over, overlaid onto the SDSS image. Uh, on the right here in black, which you can't easily see, is the integrated spectrum from the manga data cube. Um, in red, we have the spectrum extracted from the bulge component. In blue is the spectrum extracted from the disk component. And purple is the combined bulge plus disk plus sky spectrum. Uh, and you can see that it fits very well on top of the integrated light uh, from the data cube. So of these 1700 galaxies that we identified, we used uh, two different models. We used a single Surzic model for which we were able to fit 1200 galaxies successfully. And the second model was a Surzic plus exponential model. So this represents bulge plus disk. And we were able to successfully model 650 galaxies with this profile. Now, I want to emphasize again, we were very conservative in what we consider to be a very, to what we consider to be a successful fit. This is based on the structural parameters, making sure that the structural parameters for each component are reasonable and reliable, and also uh, making sure that the, that the spectrum for, spectra for each component have sufficient signal to noise to be useful. Um, so on the right here, we can see an example of the fit to one of the manga galaxies. And we have the SDSS image in the top middle with the, new, uh, the manga white light image on the left. And down below, we have the, the white light images of each model. So we have the single Surzic model here, and we have the disc and the bulge uh, here. And then finally down below, we have the um, mass weighted stellar populations from PPXF. Um, and we can see that this galaxy has quite a complex star formation history, but when we break it down into the bulge and disk, we can see that the bulge contains um, generally very old stellar populations, or at least the majority of the mass is very old, with quite a range in metallicity. Uh, whereas the disk shows a much more extended star formation history uh, and even some ongoing star formation uh, at the present time. From, the, from uh, this analysis, we can also pull out the mean mass weighted uh, stellar populations for each structure that we, uh, that we modeled. So here we have uh, the ages along the top, the metallicities along the bottom, all plotted against the total mass of the galaxy. Um, we have on the left is the results from the single Surzic fits, and then on the right are the disk and the bulge spectra. And the colors represent the Hubble type, going from early type galaxies in red to late type galaxies in blue. Now, if we look at the single Surzix, uh, we can see that the high mass galaxies, which are mostly early type galaxies, are generally very old and very metal rich. And as we move to lower masses, we start to see younger stellar populations and more metal poor stellar populations. Now, these trends can still be seen in the individual bulge and disk spectra, but uh, in particular in the bulges, but we see much more significant scatter indicating that we have quite a wide range in, uh, in stellar populations in both the bulges and disks. Um, and this is work that is still in progress. We're still analyzing the stellar populations of the bulges and disks to understand uh, what's happening. We're looking also at dependence on factors such as mass uh, as well, uh, mass and morphology. Um, but yeah, so we're building up uh, a statistical sample of clean bulge and, bulge and disk spectra through light profile fitting. And our aim to, is to try and shed light on their individual star formation histories, which will help us understand how galaxies evolve and how their morphology has transformed. And if you're interested in hearing more or getting involved, please feel free to email me. My email is at the bottom here um, or come and find me in, in one of the coffee breaks in Gather Time. Thank you.